Hey everybody, behind me is my 2020 Carbon Fiber Track Pack GT500. I installed the Competition Motorsports or CMS uh, roll bar. I installed their rear seat delete in place of my OEM uh, rear seat delete. I also got the Schroth uh, four point anti-submarine harnesses for the car, uh, for the driver's side. And I also picked up a Hans device to go with my helmet from uh, Competition Motorsports as well. I'm gonna show the bar installed uh, and talk about why I chose this bar over the Watson version. Uh, and then stick around, you'll see the full install and uh, problem that I discovered after the install uh, that Competition Motorsports uh, took care of me. So uh, here we go, hope you enjoy. So before we get into the car, uh, just showing this here, this is the, I think this is the club uh, um, by Stan 21. Hans device, haven't used it yet. Uh, the connector uh, pieces for the helmet just showed up today in the mail. Um, but let's take a look inside the car. So, got some light here so we can see because it's kind of dark in here. Um, this is the harness installed. I chose this uh, silver to be uh, the closest color to the accent colors in the, uh, the new GT500s. Um, I think it goes pretty well there. All right, here is a better look at the at the roll bar. Um, so first off, there's basically two options that I'm aware of for uh, these cars. You can get the Watson Racing Bar or the Competition Motorsports Bar. I looked at both of them and ended up deciding on the uh, Competition Motorsports Bar for a few reasons. Um, number one is this bar does not require any trimming of the interior plastic. That was a huge plus for me. I didn't want to trim any of that. Um, number two, it's lighter. This thing only weighs 50 pounds. It's a stiffer, lighter steel. And then the last one is, if you look at those rear kick legs back there, they go into the floor portion of the rear seat delete uh, versus through the back, uh, which the Watson does, and then that bar goes back into the trunk. Um, so those three reasons drove me to uh, this one over the Watson. Um, I did, however, use a couple of Watson pieces. There's Watson Street Racing uh, trim pieces there to finish out the uh, holes that uh, kind of butcher because it's hard to uh, measure precisely on where those holes go. And then I also used their um, anchor plate here for uh, the harnesses to go with the seat. One more thing I'm going to talk about before uh, getting into the installation portion of this video. Uh, as you can see, this is the carbon fiber track pack. It's got that large rear, rear wing back there. Um, I've always used the area just above the wing to look out the rear view mirror, or, you know, look out the rear to see who's behind you. Um, that area is now reduced a little bit because that bar kind of obscures some of that view. You can still see vehicles back there. It's just a little bit reduced area looking out the back. Uh, still a great uh, installation, and I'd still do it again today, but uh, just so buyer beware. Hey everybody, uh, today's project and video, the uh, Competition Motorsports or CMS uh, roll bar. It's a four point roll bar. I'm gonna install it in my 2020 Shelby GT500 uh, carbon fiber track pack. Um, I also got their rear seat delete, so I don't have to cut up mine. And uh, some harnesses. And uh, if you hear a buzz, that's the uh, Maki in the background. It's a loaner for a few days for me to check out but it is back there charging, so it's got kind of a hum you may hear on the video. But uh, we're gonna take a look at the components and get started. I'm using this little picture montage for a uh, after the fact voiceover. Um, I started this project early in the morning, expecting uh, you know to be done maybe mid afternoon uh, dinner time. I did see one video where a guy uh, took him two full days to do the install. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I thought I was going to be able to knock this out pretty quickly, and I had a car show bright and early the next morning. Um, this took me from basically uh, getting up in the morning till going to bed that night, and I still didn't quite finish it. But uh, I was under the gun for time and uh, starting to feel a little pressure towards the end. So, as you can see, I got the uh, bar powder coated uh, in uh, the body color Rapid Red. Um, there's the rear supports and uh, cross brace. Comes with a set of instructions. 
This is uh, the rear seat delete. I believe that's the bottom. Uh, that portion is the top. Comes with uh, bolts and a couple of uh, drill bits, which uh, from what I hear, the drilling portion into the super hardened steel is the most challenging part. And uh, those are my harnesses. I opted for the uh, silver, which uh, should most closely uh, match up with uh, that color right there, the accent color on the inside. So, uh, first up, I think I'm going to, uh, well, pull the uh, battery, or pull the battery uh, cables, take power off the car, and uh, remove the seats, cover and protect my center console, and remove the rear seat delete. So to remove your battery cover, um, it's just these uh, three little uh, finger nuts, so to speak, to uh, remove the uh, whole cover. And I'm just going to uh, use, I think this is a 10 millimeter maybe. Let's find out. Um, and the answer to that is yes, it's a 10 millimeter. I'm just going to uh, remove the uh, negative battery cable. And why am I taking off uh, power on the car? Because I'm messing with uh, the seats and the seat airbags. To remove the seats, uh, slide it all the way back. These are obviously the Recaros. You may have the electric base seats, um, but uh, Got to take these panels out here. They just uh, pop out with a uh, pry tool or yeah, trim pry tool. And uh, there's little ones in the back there and the, uh, the bolts are underneath there. Got the front panels removed. You can see the uh, torque bits. It is a uh, T55, goes in there. And I need both hands to uh, take that out. The rear little access panels are kind of too tight of a fit to get the uh, trim tool in there. So I used a little flathead screwdriver, stick it in on the forward side and just push down and it actually moves, moves the panels up and kind of back there because there's a uh, tab right there. You see the slot, just push right down there and it slides it aft. Driver's seat is out. Uh, to get it out, I folded it uh, forward like you see there. Um, I slid the base back towards the uh, back seat. And then I rotated the seat up so I could get access underneath it from the front. Use the light, use a screwdriver to release the uh, tabs and I uh, got both harnesses disconnected. And then uh, getting it out of the car, just uh, I leaned it back and uh, rotated the base just underneath the steering wheel. And you know, watch all your plastic coming out. Here is the uh, passenger seat. I just lifted it up a little bit and actually uh, I reached under there now, having seen the other side, and just uh, hit those tabs right there with my thumbs and uh, slid the uh, the harnesses off. Tilt the seat back, base, you know, bottom comes out first, and uh, the seats will be out. If you have a carbon fiber track pack, you have this rear seat delete from Ford. Um, I see T40 uh, torque bits, three of them, one, uh, two, three, I don't see any other connectors. Uh, so I'm gonna take those out and uh, see if there's anything else hidden. All right, just a quick point to uh, make. So I got the three uh, torque bits out or the uh, torque bit bolts out. Uh, you may wanna keep them in the proper same holes that they came out of. This one over here was uh, cross-threaded right from the factory. So the cross-threaded bolt will go back into the cross-threaded hole. But uh, you may not wanna mix them around if yours are uh, the same. The rear seat deletes out. Uh, yes, it was just the three bolts um there is a little bit of velcro in the corners in the front here there's a receiver strip right there uh you can see the sticky back came off of the rear seat delete i'm just going to leave that as is but uh it's out i'm uh taking these guys out these just unscrew uh so you can uh get that panel up and all the way there these guys they just uh, unscrew Underneath uh, this tape here, um, I believe that's where the uh, rear seat belts were uh, installed on the non-carbon fiber track pack cars. And that hole is not tapped out on the carbon fiber track pack cars. So I uh, have to tap that hole out. And let's see here, I got, let's check and see, just make sure before I go peeling tape off. Um, this is the rear, you know, kick support or whatever it's called. So it's going to go in that hole and that one right there. So I'm going to peel the tape off that other one. 
Set that there. Peel that tape off. And that hole is also not tapped. Gotta do the same on the other side. All right, now that we've got uh, the rear seat delete out, I am going to remove the uh, sills and uh, this side plastic panel right here on each side. To remove the uh, sills, just uh, lift up and it just pops right out. And there's a little retainer um, on the front that I remember from doing my dash cam install, but uh, that's just got to unhook on there. This panel is just held in with uh, these little pop uh, push pins. This one down here was uh, fighting the most. Um, I just stuck a, a trim tool down in through the gap and uh, pried it out. But uh, we'll take a look at all the uh, connectors back behind the panel when I get it out of the car. So this was the most difficult one. I just fought the most. And uh, that's the uh, part that goes right down by the sill. That would be the top that you're looking at there. But uh, Kind of where the seat belt is on the car, you'll see uh, these two push pins. You've got these guys across the top, uh, some across the back there, and uh, well, those aren't uh, going into the side. That's just holding that sound deadener. Um, but uh, I just reached up on the top there, started pulling, and it just all came out. And then I only had to use a tool down here. I believe that's everything we're going to have to take out of the car. Um, those little side panels back there, uh, those are part of the right uh, center uh, camera there, center frame. Those are all part of the side panels on the trunk, which uh, the sub is blocking. So I'm going to leave those in place, hopefully, and uh, that's it on the removal. The roll bar is going to be going in at least a couple times, in and out, um, for marking holes and drilling holes, and then putting panels back in and uh, mounting it. Um, so I covered just to protect all the uh you know first thing first i guess is i put the steering wheel all the way forward and uh up there's a lever on the bottom right uh there to adjust your steering wheel cover the center console and the sill that i'm going to be going in and out through all right minor delay uh i have to run to the hardware store to get a tap for those uh rear holes i think the instruction said and i'll uh, have a picture here it's an m 10 by 150 maybe uh the instructions did say that the tab is included i don't see it anywhere so i'm going to buy one and uh i'm gonna take the maki -E. got the uh tap took the maki -E to the uh hardware store like i said he used auto drive and tried to kill me twice <laughs> that's another video um but uh it's time to tap those rear holes success you can see the uh, threads in there it worked Got to do that one next. The outboard holes here, you're dealing with uh, clearance on the fender. I just moved the uh, the handle over, and I was able to, with both hands on there, um, you know, just turn it by hand. I didn't have to put it on any extenders on the uh, arm there. And that one worked. And the supplied bolts uh, work. Next up, I am going to take, uh, these are called kickers apparently. And I am going to loosely bolt these into place. All right, I got the kick bars uh, loosely bolted into place. And then next up is uh, putting the big uh, hoop roll bar in. It says to bend the top towards the uh, front of the car, slide it in, and it's going to sit on uh, this super hard and hard to drill uh, piece there. Having a helper is uh, helpful. You could do it by yourself, but two sets of hands are uh, good. Um, so a key here is there's a uh, wire harness on each side. You need to uh, pop that little uh, holder out. Get the light down in there. Pop that out ahead of time. I didn't realize that was gonna be a conflict, so I was battling that uh, after I got the uh, hoop in. But on each side, pop that little uh, push pin out because that's right where the uh, bar needs to go. And then up top, uh, your kickers. I just got a uh, bolt in there, just kind of keeping it lined up, but it's not, uh, there's no nut on that. Next up is I'm gonna make sure I'm centered and then I'm gonna mark the holes with a permanent marker. 
and I'm gonna mark, mark them on uh, both the front and the back. With the bar all in place, I marked the holes, uh, both front and back with the permanent marker. Uh, kind of hard to mark the back sides uh, with the uh, bar blocking you, but uh, I did mark down in there. And now I'm gonna take the bar out uh, to make drilling easier. Let's talk drilling. So included are two, uh, you know, high strength steel drill bits. Um, instead of starting with these, I am going to start with some smaller ones. I actually brought out my big uh, electric drill for this. I've got uh, these I've never used, but uh, hopefully I can uh, use some smaller bits and step it up, uh, up to the big bit. And um, the instructions say to keep it, uh, slow your drill setting slow so you don't uh, burn the drill bit and uh, use oil so i've got that three in one oil i'm going to use back there and then i am going to drill both the uh, front side of this uh, which is apparently really tough steel as well as the back side being careful of this uh, harness uh, that's running on both sides and there oh, let's see if i can show you my marks right there and there uh, which looks like it might even get into that hole that's there. That's that push pin hole. Um, but we'll see how it goes. I'm using an eighth inch uh, bit, uh, hardened, hardened steel bit, and uh, oil. I've got uh, some towels here to catch uh, oil as well as the uh, um, filings. And I have my first, first uh, eighth inch hole drilled. It, uh, you know, I went slowly, like I said, um, and uh, it took maybe a minute or two uh, of drilling. It wasn't that bad so far. Well, uh, like I said, the first hole on the left there was uh, pretty, um, it was quicker than I expected. Um, this hole on the right, I don't know if the steel is uh, thicker there or uh, what was going on, but that one took quite a while. And as you can see from over there, I tried uh, switching bits thinking maybe my bit was dull already. Um, tried other size bits. Uh, I was going small, um, but uh, they weren't cutting it. And, uh, you know, no pun intended. I ended up switching to a quarter inch bit uh, and that seemed to do the trick. So again, these are cobalt uh, bits and I'm using oil, keeping it wet. And the instructions say slow with lots of pressure, so I slowed it down even more and uh, really leaned uh, my hip into it. And uh, it was, uh, it cut through it way quicker with the uh, quarter inch bit and uh, slow with a lot of pressure. Um, now I have to drill the back sides. Success on the back side. So the quarter inch bit, uh, nice and slow, just, you know, run, 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 you know, kind of a slow rotation. Lots of oil, kept stopping and adding oil. And uh, I put um, these towels on top of this uh, wire harness as well as stuffed in behind there to catch all the oil and the filings. And I have two holes right there. I should add also that, uh, you know, drilling back towards uh, my body there, I couldn't lean into it. So I was just kind of muscling and pulling towards me. And uh, each hole took maybe uh, two minutes, two, three minutes, if that. Um, so the bigger versus the smaller bit is uh, key. Well, success on the uh, front side, proper size holes. I've got two holes there. Um, I'm not gonna lie, it sucks. <coughs> um, I mentioned earlier, I think I said I was using quarter inch bits. I was actually using uh, three 16 bits. Um, I switched uh, to a quarter inch, tried that for a while, switched to the uh, the big one that's included, tried that for a while, and uh, it's just a bear. So, thinking outside of the box, I switched gears, Dremel tool, uh, because I already had the pilot holes. I'm using grinder bits and just uh, working the hole and uh, elongating when that one gets uh, too hot there from uh, grinding on it, uh, move over to the other one and back and forth and I was able to uh, get those holes bigger. And then I just uh, came in behind with the, uh, the big bit that's included and voila, that worked. Now I got to do the same thing on the backside. I'm use my uh, Dremel on the backside on those holes back there and uh, make them bigger.
Yep, that was key. Uh, Dremel on the back side. Of course, I'm going to clean all that up. Um, but made the holes uh, pretty close to the size needed. And then uh, ran the, the big uh, supplied drill bit, you know, up, up through. And there we go. We're out the back side. And they're straight. You know, a straight bolt can go through and bolt on the other side. There you go. One side's done. Well, the passenger side is uh, drilled through both sides. Uh, it took me about uh, 40 minutes for reference for anybody doing this. Uh, having done the driver side and figured out what works, what doesn't work. Um, I used a combination of, uh, let's see, I think I started with a 3 16 bit. Um, I got a few different bits here. You know, again, slow, just enough to keep the drill turning, uh, keep putting oil on it quite a bit, uh, a lot of pressure. And then, um, you know, when it would get through, uh, you're drilling, you're just drilling through uh, this side, you know, the front side. When it would get, and when it would get through, I would move the drill around in an orbital kind of rotation to uh, elongate the hole and then uh, move up to another size drill bit. I did that a handful of times. And then uh, switch to the uh, Dremel again, which was a huge key, uh, working the hole. And uh, when it would start to get real hot, I would move over to the other side, work that one for a while and go back and forth. Um, of course, I got water standing by in case anything catches fire, but nothing catches, caught fire. Um, you're gonna have a lot of shavings. So I got uh, rags, I got uh, rags for the shaving and the oil, but uh, yeah, both sides. And you can see how dirty it is. I haven't cleaned this side up, but uh, the other side I did uh, use my shop vac and some uh, cleaner and some rags. So uh, now that the holes are drilled, I'm gonna test fit the uh, bar, make sure everything's good, and then uh, put the panels back in and put the bar in uh, permanently. I have some rapid red uh, body color paint, so I, uh, I just painted the um, raw steel drilled holes, both sides. Well, I've uh, done a few things. I'm catching you up to speed. Um, I uh, brought the bar in, test fitted the holes, and discovered uh, that the holes over on the passenger side, I needed to kind of elongate a little bit. So I used my Dremel tool again and uh, elongated them left to right to uh, kind of line up with the bar a little bit better. Um, and so I took the bar back out after doing that test fit, uh, uh, touched up the paint again in there. Now I'm trying to figure out this uh, rear seat delete. Um, so I put my interior side panels back in. I put, uh, there's uh, this little trim piece. Um, here, if I can set down the light. This little trim piece right down here, I put that back in. And I've got the back of the rear seat delete in. I'm just seeing how these... Uh, these uh, bases go. There's a center support here. I ended up using my own push pin for the front hole because uh, best I could tell is the supplied pin was way too big. I've got a variety set of pins. I just uh, used my own. Um, and then uh, next up is figuring out these uh, supports. And I also have to cut the rear seat, uh, delete the bottom part uh, for the um, the bars that go backwards, uh, the, the kick legs or whatever they're called. Uh, uh, to have them go through the seat. Okay, figured out these uh, seat supports. Uh, let me move the light over here a little bit better. Um, they're supposed to go down in this uh, lower seat belt hole, which is normally threaded. Um, and uh, obviously there are bolts that would go in there normally. I didn't want to tap that because I've already got the panels in. So I just used some heavy duty push pins and that uh, supports that corner right there. There's some Velcro on there that matches up with um, uh, the underside of the seat, uh, the rear seat delete. This uh, hole was covered in tape. There is a uh, another pin back in there. I'll zoom in so you can see there, but that's how that goes on there. One on each side. I just have the rear seat delete sitting in place. I have not uh, secured it down because I have to cut it for the kick legs. Um, but it's worth mentioning there's a couple pieces of material I go right back in that little corner right there that would normally be exposed. Um, you just tuck those up back uh, behind the plastic panels. Um, but that's how that fits. Looks actually pretty good. Well, uh, the bar is in. Um, it's in and tightened down. All right, um, some things uh, to help the next person that does the install. Um, first off, these bolts here, I did not uh, notice that some of them are, uh, two of them are slightly longer than the others. 
Um, so I ended up, and I have some pressure on those, so I had to kind of pry, uh, use one hole to pry the, uh, the bar over just slightly, um, to get the uh, bolts through. But, uh, so then I had them all kind of jammed in there and improper, and I was all happy and I was going to tighten. I realized that the uh, threads weren't long enough on uh, one of them. Um, so, um, the longer one goes on the outboard side. You can kind of see how that angles out. So there's a longer bolt on the upward side on each side. I put the nuts in the back so, uh, you know, the excess thread is sticking out underneath the uh, rear seat delete. Um, other things, uh, you know, Mechanic 101, make sure you get everything in position before you snug down. Um, so I kind of uh, had these upper uh, bolts, uh, nuts uh, somewhat snug. And then this uh, horizontal brace here just would not go in. Um, so I loosened everything up. Um, I, you know, even had some of these uh, snug here, loosened them up. Had to uh, really kind of uh, push and pry, but uh, finally got that in there and, um, you know, used the bolts themselves with the nuts on the backside to tighten down to, um, you know, pull that, uh, that seam there together on both sides. But got the horizontal brace in, snugged up. Uh, you know, the got the horizontal brace first in and then the top parts in, snugged everything down, and then I went back and tightened everything. So it's in, it's it's tight, it's good. Um, I, I started working on uh, rear seat delete cutting, realized I have to have uh, everything in place here so I know exactly where the bars are going to be and, and uh, how to cut it. But uh, yeah, um, it's been a long day, long battle. Uh, I'm going to break for uh, dinner here and uh, get back in the fight. Rear seat delete cutting time. Uh, this was actually a bigger challenge than I envisioned. Um, I went with the aftermarket uh, rear seat delete because I didn't want to hack up my original Ford unit. Um, you can see the strategy I took here. I used a uh, hole saw to cut holes. Uh, the problem is, is there's really no good way to accurately measure where the holes go. Um, you need the rear seat delete in place um, to really mark it well, but then it doesn't go in place, obviously, with the roll bar there, so you're kind of estimating. And uh, I was at the end of a long day, kind of worn out, fried, trying to get this uh, set up for early in the next morning car show. Uh, ended up kind of butchering the holes. So my solution to clean up the holes was uh, these trim rings from Watson Streetworks. Uh, I think they turned out well. They're not cheap though. They're $42 each. I had to go with four of them. Um, but the metal ring is essentially a two piece that is held together by a dowel and I just cut the boots to go around and the end result turned out pretty well. Well, I've got the roll bar fully installed. Uh, next up was the uh, harness install and uh, that's when I discovered the problem. The optional harness loops uh, do not line up with the seats. Uh, they're essentially too far to the outboard of the uh, roll bar. I uh, spoke to the company, uh, CMS Motorsports there, and um, they said that they had a couple instances of this before. They've now uh, removed that as an option on the uh, Mustang roll bars. We discussed options, and uh, one of the options was to remove the, uh, the main hoop there of the roll bar. Uh, they would pay for shipping, send it back into the company. They would remove the harness loops and uh, re-powder coat, uh, you know, taking it in and out after it's fully reinstalled, shipping it back and forth. Um, that's going to be quite the project. I am going to attempt uh, to protect the inside of the car with a bunch of plastic and cut, grind, uh, remove the harness hoops. Um, and then, you know, do a little bit of paint touch up. Uh, the harness hoops really don't affect uh, the roll bar or the harnesses. You can put them just on the uh, bar itself. Uh, they were just a nice added option, but uh, they're not gonna work. I'm gonna take you inside the car right now and show you uh, the harness hoops and uh, show you what the problem is. See that one right there. They're essentially uh, too close to the outside of the car. Um, and when you look down, let's see if I can get my light in the camera. This one actually lines up, um, but there's no space between the harness hoops. Uh, they butt up against each other, and as you can see, the uh, Recaro there has quite a space in between. So this one over here uh, does not line up whatsoever. Um, I'll show you a picture from the backside uh, that I took. So my best course of action that I can see at this point 
Like I said, I'm going to get some plastic and uh, spread it around the inside of the vehicle to uh, collect the little metal uh, fragments. And I'm going to try uh, cutting off. You know, it's connected at three points there. Cutting it off. Um, there's various ways I can cut it off. I've got a big uh, heavy-duty grinder, but that would just sling stuff everywhere. I'm going to try a you know, light-duty uh, Dremel tool and see if that works. Uh, see if it works. And then I've got other options. So uh, we'll get back to this uh, after hopefully I solve this problem. Well, using uh, my heavier duty uh, grinder and a light duty Dremel, this is a sanding bit I was finishing up with, but uh, I used some uh, cut wheels. There's one that was broken and uh, some grinder, grinder wheels. Um, I was able to use the uh, cut wheels to cut the three spots off. This is uh, the driver's side uh, bracket. And uh, then I, you know, I cut, cut it off. I left a nub so I wasn't cutting down into the bar. And then I used my grinder, heavy duty grinder here and here because it was shooting the uh, debris that way. And um, this one over here, I couldn't use uh, the grinder because the angle I was shooting the debris towards me. So I just used a cut wheel and cleaned it up a little bit more on my Dremel and then used the grinder and sander disc. And um, I think that's gonna work. Still have the other side, I guess I will tackle that. Um, and then gotta clean up all, I mean the car right now is covered with uh, metal uh, shavings uh, that went everywhere as you can see there in the plastic. Um, but uh, hopefully get all that out and then uh, vacuum up the inside. And then uh, finish with uh, touching up the paint. On second thought, I think I'm just gonna leave that one over there cause uh, I don't have a second set of harnesses anyways for the passenger. Um, I'll leave it there and then I can always take it off in the future. Well, I've decided to tackle the passenger side too. Um, so I put the plastic back in and uh, time to cut and grind and fix that uh, and then touch up the paint. I got all the uh, cutting and grinding done. I uh, used the Dremel with the cut tool to do a cut off of the uh, bar. So hopefully I didn't dig down into the bar. Left quite a bit as you saw. Then I used my big grinder to lower that. Then I used the Dremel to uh, kind of fine tune it. Um, but uh, I think it came out as best as it could at this stage. Now it's time to clean up all the fricking metal everywhere and uh, shavings and then uh, paint it up. All right, I've got the shoulder harnesses wrapped on the uh, bar and I'm gonna explain how I did it. Basically just followed a video online. Um, so what I did is uh, the strap comes up goes through the first slot, over the center bar, through the back slot, down. Then you take it around the bottom of the bar, over the top of the bar, and that's what you can see right there underneath the strap. And then once you come over the top of the bar, you come back up again through this rear slot, over the center bar, back through the front slot, so it's coming down towards the bottom of the car, wrap it underneath the front, all the way to the back, 
back through that rear slot again and out the back. And then this I'm just gonna roll up and zip tie. So to, to just to clarify, come up through the front slot, over the center bar, down, around the bottom of the bar, over the top. That's what you're seeing back there. Feed it back in through the rear slot, over the top of the center bar, down through the front slot, underneath the uh, front there, all the way over across the center and uh, through the rear slot. And that's the excess uh, wrap there that I'm gonna tuck up. I got the uh, excess straps uh, wrapped up and zip tied. Got the seat forward so we can see it, but uh, that turned out pretty well. Got the seat back uh, to where I drive and showing the shoulder harnesses. The lap belt will happen a little bit later when uh, I ordered a uh, base plate to secure the lap belts to. Um, and then I'll show the, uh, the whole harness system in play. But uh, the shoulder harnesses turned out well. Gonna talk about what I'm doing to uh, solve how to hook the racing harnesses, you know, the lap belt to uh, the car itself. Um, so this is a plate I got from Watson Racing, just came in. I've been uh, waiting to complete this project uh, for this plate. Um, and uh, my understanding is you lift up your, uh, or you know, remove the uh, four bolts from your uh, driver's seat, lift up the rear, slide this underneath there, and then find the holes that line up there with your uh, uh, OEM bolt holes. And then these uh, get screwed into there and you can connect the uh, harness clips on each side of the seat. We'll see how it works. Well, that was an easy install. Easy is uh, always good. Um, so remove the covers, take out the uh, bolts in the back. I removed the covers and uh, loosened up the bolts in the front. Lifted up the uh, seat rails there and uh, slid over, slid the um, harness uh, retainer bar underneath there. Of course, I got the uh, eye bolts installed with the uh, nylon locking nuts on the back side there. Tighten down the uh, seat bolts and uh, it feels good and snug. Now, I should be able to just uh, clip on these uh, fittings here on the ends, on the hooks. Got everything snug down and uh, discovered that uh, rotating these eye hooks uh, 90 degrees works better. Uh, the way the uh, harness comes back here, but uh, these guys, they just clip, clip in. And there are some cotter pins that come with it to uh, pin that if you want to prevent it from uh, possibly coming undone. Um, but there it is. Well, that's the installation of the Competition Motorsports or CMS roll bar in the 2020 Shelby GT500. I also showed the uh, aftermarket rear seat delete that Competition Motorsports uh, offers. Uh, we got the harnesses installed, showed that. That's the Schroth 4-point anti-submarine harnesses that I also used a Watson uh, anchor plate to uh, connect it to the car. Used some Watson Racing um, trim pieces back there for the roll bar going through the rear seat delete. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.